our cell is just like a factory where the plasma membrane of the cell is compared to the boundary wall of the factory. Now, unlike the boundary wall, which is made up of brick in the factory, the cell membrane is pretty fluid. And even the protein on the membrane can even move in these sea of lipids like an island. So the membrane is pretty much flexible in nature. And in this video, we would look the reason for this fluidity and what is the advantage of having fluidity or not having or having rigidity. So what type of motion does the lipid molecules exhibit inside a membrane? So if we think about a patch of the membrane, so one particular phospholipid can show lateral movement, laterally it can diffuse in any direction, but the rate is very slow. It can also show rotational movement along its own axis. It can also show flip-flop movement like from one bilayer to the other face of the bilayer. So all these possible movement can happen. Now even we talk about the flip-flop movement or trans bilayer movement, we can see from the outer leaflet to the inner leaflet this kind of movement can happen and that can happen with the help of several enzymes like clipase whereas the inner to outer movement happens with the help of floppase and with scramblease the bidirectional movement happens so membrane fluidity and type of membrane movement is dependent upon several proteins as well but there is also several kind of like a uh, spontaneous diffusion happening now we should ask the question what is the uh, like how the membrane fluidity can be experimentally de determined and then how scientists found out that membrane is fluid not something very solid and second we should point out the cause that why membrane is fluid and what factors govern membrane fluidity so let's say you have a cell like this in a cultured dish then you in the membrane is unlabeled right now but you can eventually label the membrane with a fluorescently marked lipids so eventually the cells would have a labeled membrane which is a fluorescently labeled membrane and then under a fluorescence microscope you can apply like very high intensity laser to bleach that region out after bleaching out with high intensity laser the region or where the laser has fallen is totally like devoid of fluorescence but if you wait for some time and uh, cross check the fluorescence over time then you would see there is some amount of like recovery in this fluorescence gradually as the time pass so this ob observation asks uh, uh, led to the discovery that the membrane was fluid if the membrane was not fluid the nearby membrane uh, nearby uh, lipid molecules which are fluorescent cannot come into the region and like try to recover the fluorescence over time so the fluorescence recovery after photo bleaching was one of the experiment by which scientists found out that the membranes are fluid now let's talk about what are the factors that govern membrane fluidity or membrane flexibility so first of all the main important point is the temperature so with the increase of temperature the packing of the membrane is way more loose and membrane is way more fluid because with higher temperature the kinetic energy of the each phospholipid molecule is increased and with increased kinetic uh, energy there is increased possibility of mobility so with the increase in temperature the membrane move towards a solid to a fluid state let's talk about the lipid structure and the membrane uh, fluidity so the membrane portion which is shown in the left hand side is less fluid it has all saturated fatty acid chains now the saturated fatty acid chains are such you know packed in a such a way that they are they could be like packed very dense manner so they are like behaving more a rigid body than a fluid structure but if you have unsaturated fatty acid the unsaturated fatty acid would have a kink now this kink would prevent packing very dense packing and that is how uh, a membrane which has a lot of these 
a kink containing unsaturated fatty acid would be more fluid than the other membrane which has only saturated fatty acids so the membrane composition is a big deal in terms of membrane fluidity definitely cholesterol concentration is very important factor governing membrane fluidity now at lower concentration cholesterol works like a dynamic glue it binds to the kink and can kind of like increase the rigidity of the membrane make the membrane less fluid so it decreases the membrane fluidity but think about a very high concentration of cholesterol when the cholesterol concentration is high it don't allow the close or dense packing of the phospholipids and that is how increased cholesterol concentration can increase membrane fluidity as well and this is especially important for uh, animals which are raised in very cold environment like in like polar bear like that so their membrane does not uh, freeze because they have very high concentration of cholesterol as well now apart from that we can think about the composition of the lipid in membrane and the heterogeneity of the lipid molecules in the membrane lead to different degree of uh, rigidity in the membrane for example some lipid you would find only in the outer leaflet some lipid some variety of lipid you would find majorly in the inner leaflet for example phosphatidyl choline is majorly present in the outer leaflet whereas phosphatidyl serine or ethylenolamine are majorly present in the inner leaflet also there are patches inside the membrane which has altered lipid compositions such as they have like uh, sphingomyelin more cholesterol and ergosterol etc so that patch is kind of little bit rigid and different from the nearby region and they are also resistant to detergents as well so these particular regions or semi solid regions are known as lipid rafts lipid rafts are good site for a uh, clustering of membrane receptors several internal kinase protein gpi anchor proteins and caveolin so a lot of important signaling function takes place in the lipid raft and there are it turns out in a whole patch of membrane there are small small portions where these lipid raft exist where the membrane rigidity is high and they're resistant to detergent and lipid raft in terms of cellular physiology and cell communication and signaling is super important so in this video we had an overview that what are the factors that affect uh, cell membrane fluidity and what happens is like membrane uh, and and how specific rigid, rigid region inside the membrane works like a signaling hub inside the uh, cell so i hope you enjoyed this video if you give it a, uh, if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you